Nature and Science during 1965, uh, I mean, from the period of 1965 to 1967. And he has won several awards. So he has written this little incident about Albert Einstein when, as a child, he went to school. So Albert Einstein from 1879 to 1955 is regarded as the greatest physicist since Newton. In the following extract from the young Einstein, the well-known biographer Patrick Pringle describes the circumstances which led Albert Einstein ex expulsion from a German school. So we are going to look at this, all right? Now, before I start the story, I'll help you with the theme of the story before I take line-wise explanation. Now, this extract from Albert Einstein's biography records the unhappy period now. See what I've said? Unhappy period of his schooling in, in Munich. So was Einstein happy with his school? No, he was not. Okay, so we can say that it was an unhappy period for Einstein when he was doing his schooling in Munich. Eventually, Einstein was expelled from the school right so at school einstein uh, was not at all enthusiastic about the study of history so he did not like studying history right and he felt it was more important maybe to study ideas rather than facts okay his teachers at the school in munich were displeased with him they were not happy with the kind of arguments that he presented uh, regarding why we should be consider, uh, why should be we should be uh, kind of more attentive to novel ideas rather than learning facts. Because if you have to look at facts, if you have to do a fact check, you can simply pick up a book, turn a few pages, and see where the fact is mentioned, and that's it. What to him was most important were the novel ideas that could bring revolutionary changes in the world. So he was not interested in learning facts, especially history, which is all about learning facts. But that's Einstein's point of view, children, okay? Let me tell you one thing. I always say this to my children who take history, right, uh, as a subject. And also to students who kind of do not like history. To them, I say that if you do not know where you come from, then how will you appreciate where you're going, all right? So history tells us where we come from. So it's important to learn history. It's important to give due recognition to history. Einstein is a different case, okay? I don't want you all to be a rebellion, okay? Moving on. So uh, Albert was miserable most of the time in school. Albert had been sent to the school for study for a diploma. Now, his living quarters offered no relief, right? So the place where he lived, it was a slum and it did not also bring him relief. So his life was a misery in school. And then when he went back to the place where he lived in Munich, his life became more miserable, right? So he did not find relief anywhere. There was dirt and squalor and plenty of slum violence. That's one thing that he hated the most, right? Okay. Uh, his only friends in Munich were Yuri, a medical student, and Elsa, his cousin from Berlin. Now, if you'll remember, in class ninth, you were taught about Albert Einstein, right? Uh, so you've, you've learned about him. And you know what? Albert Einstein married Elsa. That was his second marriage. So he married his own cousin, right? Uh, never mind, moving on. So they tried to cheer him up, and Einstein, however, did not like to study geology and books on, uh, and, and books on them, okay? He was exceptionally good at math. Uh, he also played on violin to console himself, right? So after six months, Einstein could not take it anymore, and he wanted to get away from school. So he asked his friend Yuri to find 
a doctor, maybe uh, like a nerve doctor, or should I say a neurologist, a better expression, who would give him a certificate of a nervous breakdown and recommended rest for six months. So he wanted to fake a medical certificate. Uh, don't we all do it most of the time when we want to stay away from school? We uh, feign, uh, feign means F-E-I-G-N. Feign is like to pretend uh, sick, that we are sick. And then of course, uh, we provide fake certificates from doctors, okay? Because everyone has a family doctor. That's when a family doctor comes to rescue. OK, so Yuri found one Dr. Ernst Wheel, but uh, told Einstein to be absolutely truthful with him. Now, Dr. Wheel felt he was really close to a nervous breakdown. So when Einstein met Dr. Wheel, Dr. Wheel found that in reality, Einstein was almost on the verge of a nervous breakdown. So he gave him the certificate right, so that he can continue his education in Milan. So the next day before Einstein could present the medical certificate, he was called by the head teacher and asked to leave the school. Now Einstein had been expelled for constant rebellion. So he was, a rebe he was rebellious in nature, and as a result of which, he was asked to leave school. Because if he stayed back in school, his rebellious nature might rub into others, and then, the teachers, especially the subject teachers who, who did not have much importance in the eyes of teachers, would lose their significance and importance. So that was the last thing that the principal wanted. So he expelled Einstein. This way, Einstein's wish comes true and he leaves school forever. Does he regret this? Not at all. A big no. Okay. So this is the sum and substance of Albert Einstein at school. It's about that little unhappy period of his stay in school in Munich. And we have also got to know uh, the characters in the story. We have Albert Einstein. Uh, we have Mr. Brown, who is Einstein's history teacher, right? And then we have Yuri. Then we have Elsa, Dr. Ernst Wheel. Then we have one Mr. Coach, who is Einstein's maths teacher, and he thinks highly of Einstein, right? And of course, there's the head teacher, the principal of the school. So these are the primary characters in this short story. I'll take uh, two to three classes to finish this thing because it's a very interesting story. Furthermore, I'd like to tell my students that there are some chapters in both the main book and the supplementary that I will not take because they're boring and I don't like them personally, okay? Uh, there are a few chapters and I'll tell you what these chapters are, I'll WhatsApp them, okay? But yes, uh, you are open to ask me questions if you have any and I'll help you understand these chapters. Right, moving on. Let's start with this chapter, right? Okay, right, here we go. In what year Einstein, as the history teacher, did the Prussians defeat the French at Waterloo? I don't know, sir. Why don't you know? You've been told it often enough. I must have forgotten. Did you even, did you even try to learn? Asked Mr. Brown. No, sir, Albert replied with his usual unthinking honesty. Why not? I can't see any point in learning dates. One can always look them, uh, look them up in a book. Mr. Brown was speechless for a few moments. All right. So let us see uh, how the story begins. All right. Okay. So the let this lesson starts with an account of Albert Einstein with his history teacher, where the teacher asks him about the year in which the Prussians defeated the French at Waterloo. I hope you all know when French, uh, when uh, uh, Napoleon was defeated. It was the year 1815. Okay, right. And then, of course, Treaty of Vienna, if you all remember, right? Uh, all, uh, I mean, uh, all the uh, four uh, victorious countries met after Napoleon was defeated and they drafted the Treaty of Vienna, 1815. Right, so maybe you know that. Okay, so as usual, uh, Einstein does not remember it, to which Mr. Brown points out that the reason for this is because Einstein never bothers to learn them. Okay, now Albert tries to justify 
that he finds it pointless that he has to learn the dates because one can always look them up in book whenever you need them, right? But this answer of Albert Einstein left Mr. Brown dumbstruck for a while. Looks like Albert Einstein is against rote learning, which is often promoted in school because you're told to mug up things and kind of spit it out during the examination, get the marks and move ahead. Right. This is not the kind of knowledge which helps because we have the tendency to forget. Right. So we did not gain any knowledge. Rather, it was rote learning and it was wiped out from our memory the moment that thing became useless. Here we see that Einstein is not interested in history. He's forced to learn it too. Uh, he's also against rote learning. And he's outright honest about his opinions, about his thoughts. He does not mince words. I use, look, I'm using expressions. He did not mince words, right? He was, I mean, he was as clear as he could be. But that response of his made Mr. Brown uncomfortable in front of the entire class, right? You amaze me, Einstein, he said at last. Don't you realize that one can always look most things up in books? That applies to all facts you learn at school. Yes, sir. Then, I suppose, you don't see any point in learning facts. Frankly, sir, I don't, said Einstein. Then you don't believe in education at all. Oh, yes, sir, uh, I do. I don't think learning facts is education. That's what he said. Okay. Moving on, I'll just... In that case, said the history teacher with a heavy sarcasm, perhaps you will be so kind as to tell the class the Einstein theory of education. Albert Einstein flushed. Okay. Right, so let's understand what happens here, right? So Mr. Brown, kind of, he regained his composure, right? Finally, Mr. Brown was back to being normal. And then he makes a remark on Einstein. He says that you're, um, you amaze me, you surprise me, Einstein. Right? Don't you realize that this theory of yours of checking facts applies on all the subjects, right? I mean, if, because all the subjects are about facts. So you can pick up book and find the facts th that are written there, right? So, and Einstein, as if shamelessly, accepts the fact. He said, yes, yeah, so that's right. You're right. Absolutely. Right? This annoys Mr. Brown further. He says, then I guess you don't see any point in learning facts. And, and, and Einstein is as frank as he could be. He said, yes, sir, frankly, I don't believe that there is a point in learning facts. To which Mr. Brown countered, then you don't believe in, in education at all. Because to Mr. Brown, learning facts is education. And maybe that is what Mr. Brown has been taught since childhood, all right? That you learn facts and you can quote them and that's education. No, no, that's not education. That's being literate, that's all, okay? And literacy does not account for being uh, educated, right? Oh yes, yeah, so I do, I do. I don't think that learning facts is education, said Einstein as a matter of fact. Of course, you know what, children, you have experienced it and you will experience it even more since you're in higher classes, right? Now, you will be ridiculed in classes. There'll be, there'll be teachers who will shower you with heavy sarcasm every time you are found questioning a teacher or kind of, uh, you know, trying to, uh, you know, put a question mark on a teacher. That, Sir, what you said is maybe not correct, okay? Because no teacher wants to be checked. So Mr. Brown employs heavy sarcasm. He says, in that case, uh, uh, Einstein, will you be kind enough to please tell the class Einstein theory of education? And Albert flushed. What is the meaning of flushed? Did he go to washroom and flush? No. The meaning of flushed is he felt embarrassed. Of course, if a teacher you know, schools a student in the class, mocks a student in a class, mortifies a student in a class, the student will feel, of course, embarrassed, all right? So let's see. 
Today we'll uh, learn only till the conversation between Mr. Brown and Albert Einstein. We'll not rush with our lessons. I think it's not facts that matters, but ideas, he said. I don't see a point in learning facts learning the dates of battles or even which of the armies killed more men. I'd be more interested in learning why those soldiers were trying to kill each other. Of course, a question was put forth by Mr. Brown and Einstein has to answer. So Einstein came up with an honest opinion of what he thinks. Einstein said that, yes, I think facts don't matter to me. What matters to me the most are the ideas because ideas bring revolution, they bring, bring the change in the world. He says he does not see a point in learning the dates of battles, or even which of the armies killed more men. You see, I mean, uh, geography and all these subjects are very good for tests because battles start on one day and end on other day. So it, they can be tested in MCQ types of situations, right? And you can be awarded marks, right? Uh, or even which of the armies killed more men. So he was not interested in that. Rather, he would be more interested in knowing and learning what prompted these soldiers to fight each other and why, were, why did they bay for each other's blood? Why did they want to slit each other's throat and uh, you know, thrust their spears into each other's body and maybe use their gun to uh, make holes in... Uh, in the enemy's uh, in the enemy enemy soldier's body at all wrong places so he wanted to know that what would prompt a person to do such a heinous crime crime against humanity all right that's enough mr brown's eyes were cold and cruel i don't want you want a lecture from you einstein you will stay in for an extra period today although i don't imagine it will do you much good it won't do the school any good either you're a disgrace. I don't know why you continue to come. Right. Mr. Brown could not assimilate what Einstein said. Right. He provoked Einstein to speak this much. Don't push a student to a limit where you think whatever he says is a disrespect for the teacher. So don't push a student to that, that edge, to the corner, because even a corner, ca cornered cat will fight back. Right. So Mr. Brown could not take it anymore. Right. He says that, look, I don't want any lecture from you, Einstein. And because of your temerity, because of your impudence, you will have to stay in for an extra period and do some work. So that's a punishment for you for obstructing a teacher, for questioning a teacher. Right. And, and he was certain that that will not do much good to Einstein, right? And then he makes a final degrading statement on Einstein. He says that it, won't, it will not even do school good, right? You're a disgrace, not only to school, but to your family members. Uh, haven't you heard this thing so many times in PTMs, right? Parents giving you and your parents an earful if you do not perform well, if you do not get good grades. Right. Sometimes I think that teachers behave like, uh, like, 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 like uh, people who look into, like people who prognosticate or who look into other people's future. Right. Because when a teacher looks at your marks and he sees uh, instead of 98, 97, 96, but numbers, which look like a cell phone, right, a digit of cell phone, right, nine eight seven four three six. Then by looking at that num those numbers, a teacher says that, uh, you know what, you will never make anything out of, out of your life. So that, he or she declares that thing, right? So Mr. Brown also kind of mounted or piled those insults on Einstein and said that you are no good, right? You're a disgrace, not only to school, but to society, but to your parents as well, right? And he wonders that why don't you, why don't you discontinue, right? Uh, coming to school. It's not my wish, sir, Albert pointed out. Then you are an ungrateful boy and ought to be ashamed of yourself. I suggest you ask your father to take you away. Ah, this is the final nail in the coffin. Bring in the parents, all right? So that's what Mr. Brown did, right? And then he left. Poor Einstein felt real bad. 
Now, I've taught you this conversation between Mr. Brown and Einstein, where Einstein speaks his mind out. He pours his heart out. He tells what is in his mind. But that is not liked by the teacher because what he says is, not, is something that teacher does not want to listen. Right? So please mull over this, read it till here, try to understand the conversation. The most important question of all is, uh, that can be asked to you is, explain the Einstein theory of education. Right? This is one important question that can be asked. And also that what was Einstein more interested in? Facts or ideas? And then question, why? Okay, and how did Mr. Brown uh, insult Einstein? Okay, so we are going to learn till here. Uh, right, so we're going to stop our, uh, I'm going to stop screen sharing now. Right, Yashwardhan, you have, you seem to have a question, son. I'll unmute you. Yes, boy, go ahead. Sir, so, so what is the meaning of prognosticate? Prognosticate is to kind of, uh, you know, look into uh, future kind of thing. If I remember, did I use the word prognosticate? Yes, sir. I did. How many of you say that? Uh, say that I've used the word prognosticate. Yes, 